Beethoven is a revolutionary figure who pushed the envelope of almost every form he touched. He didn't just write a symphony or a string quartet, he changed what those art forms were, what they could be. Beethoven is hugely influential, probably the most influential composer of all time. You can hear the effect of Beethoven on all the music that came after him, all of it. Even composers that claimed different traditions, like Brahms and Wagner, they both venerated Beethoven. Beethoven really comes in three packets, symphony, string quartets and piano sonatas. He wrote these throughout his life. Like Rembrandt's self-portraits, you can follow Beethoven's life's journey through them. In each genre, he set the standard and he set it ridiculously high. Largest and loudest of Beethoven's symphonies, you can date his arrival on the world stage with those first two chords of his third. Beethoven's symphonies, particularly the odd numbered ones, are grand public statements on European politics. They're bigger, louder and longer than anything before. His final, the ninth, combined the symphony with the choral finale. Nothing like it had been composed before or since. Beethoven's more intimate thoughts are penned in 32 wonderful piano sonatas, the New Testament, after Bach's Old Testament preludes and fugues. These don't prescribe, they explore. They push expressiveness to the highest possible degree. They push music towards its transcendental limits. and early showing of ragtime. These sonatas record Beethoven as most intimate and immediate. They go far and they go deep. Final proof of Beethoven's genius are 16 string quartets, which develop from youthful enthusiasm into the deepest introspection of his late quartets. These late quartets take you deep into the mind of an ageing genius. They're probably the most profound and expressive music ever written. You can know the mind of a composer by listening to their music, literally. When you listen to a great composer's best work, it's like being inside their head, hearing them think. So what Beethoven do we hear when we hear Beethoven think? There's definitely something of the angry young man about him. The rebellious streak, the loudness. But also the prickly emotions, the awkwardness. Going deaf certainly didn't help, not socially. Beethoven started to notice problems when he was 28 and by his mid 40s he was totally deaf. It was crippling for the already socially awkward man who pretended to everyone for as long as he could that his hearing was fine. Did his deafness harm his music? Clearly not. His best work comes in his late period when he was totally deaf. The work of this late period has such a distinct intensity you can't help thinking the deafness probably helped. Beethoven challenges you constantly. He's ebullient, full of energy, sometimes rage and fury. But also gentle and tender, even within a few bars. And he's always honest, rigorously honest. His music will always tell you how he feels. Beethoven cared, and so does his music. The man was a truly monumental figure, about whom you can genuinely say, he didn't just change music, he changed the world. Mm -hmm.